We've got everything up and running. Give me just one second, fellas and ladies. Make sure that we're good to go. And hey, what's going on, everybody? It looks like we are up and running live on another edition of Keep Calm and Carry. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I am super excited for the guests that we have. Naturally, all the guests that I have, I'm super excited for. But this one is. Um, really special to me uh, because of a number of different things. We'll get into that here in just a second. Uh, real quick, if you guys are new and don't know what's going on with the channel, welcome. Please make sure that if you have any questions for our guests, put it down into the chat room. Make sure you put the at fit apostrophe in space fire so that I know um, that you guys are asking a question. It'll highlight it on my side so I can easily pick it up. If it doesn't work, I'll try to catch it, but uh, bear with me, guys. Kind of a one-man show sometimes. So, uh, But with that being said, I'm happy that you guys have joined me tonight to uh, check things out. So let's get into it. Uh, first and foremost, if you don't already know, fitandfire.com is up and running. That's my website to support everything that's going on with the channel. And a new addition is we now have a Discord. If you guys are interested, I have a link to that down in the description below. You guys can check that out. I don't really know what it really does, but I've got someone running it for me. So I appreciate that. I check in every once in a while. I drop some stuff in there and, uh, um, you know, try to keep things going. If you guys have questions for uh, the guests, you can put, their, put that into the Discord uh, ahead of time. And uh, I will try my best to get it worked into the chat room. So real quick, let's jump into the chat and say hi to everybody. The Grim Reaper in there first. Boom. Yeah. Heck yeah, man. I uh, hope you enjoyed corn and hope you enjoy kiss coming up on Wednesday, man. Happy birthday to you, brother. Uh, Robert adds in there. Yo, yo, what's going on? Shepard Avery. Hey, what's going on, buddy? Good to see you. Um, let's see. They're going back and forth. GG. I love GGG. Good to see you. And that right there, that guy right there, GGLFGGG, he's the one that started the seed of the AK in me. So uh, we have him to thank for all of this. <laughs> Todd Schmidt in there. He's doing homework as usual. Uh, Scott P79, good to see you. Hootie hoo, hey yo, what's going on? Good to see you. Uh, Flannel Merce. <laughs> <laughs> good to see you. That's a love that. Blitz, good to see you. Clash Point. Hey, hey. Clash Point, man. It's right on. Mahler's in there, too. Uh, jumped ahead a little bit. Uh, Robin Patty, good to see you. Um, Beast jumping in there. And Gun Show. Gun Show. Gun Show. Yeah. Show and Tuck. <laughs> what is what it is, man? Marcus, good to see you. Tilted flip. All right. Okay, so we're going to jump into this um, because we've got a lot to cover tonight. You guys know who my guest is. It is the uh, Jim Fuller. Uh, Jim, thank you so much for coming in tonight. Uh, first and foremost, if you guys don't know, Jim has his own channel that he's doing a live chat. It's called Guns, Guitar, and Freedom. Uh, if you guys are interested in that, make sure you swing by and check that out. I will pin a comment into this chat so you guys can find it. I'll also put it into the description. Um, I, I should have thought of that ahead of time, and I apologize for that, Jim, but uh, I just now right. thought of it. Yeah, man. But uh, definitely uh, have some great times over there with, uh, with your boy Tufu. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I couldn't do that shit without Tufu. <laughs> <laughs> so um I have to freely admit that until about about three years ago, I really didn't know who Jim Fuller was. I, I knew kind of about of you know rifle dynamics and 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 you know high-end AKs and stuff like that, but I really didn't understand any of that. So um for those that are in the chat room that may have been living underneath a rock for the last 20 years. Uh, <laughs> tell us who Jim is and where, where did all of this come from? Uh, boy. Well, <laughs> um, um, well, you know, most recently, uh, or at least within the last 15 years, you know, um, basically at the end of the uh, assault weapons ban, when we realized we could start doing things again, 
you know, I would, I'd been monkeying with this gun for, I've been running this gun for like 40 years. I started, got my first one in the early eighties. So, you know, I've been a fan of this gun for a long time, worked on them over the years because nobody else would, you know, back in those days. And, uh, but they, um, you know, they, they, they kind of got under my skin and I really began to like them a lot. So when I was able to start building legitimate AKs after the salt weapons ban, you know, sunset in 2004, um, we went at it hard and heavy. And, uh, in those days, I was uh, teaching for Suarez International, and uh, we knew a lot of contractors through that age. We taught a lot of contractors there. And uh, these guys were discovering the AK over their first time going over there, you know, about 03, 04, you know, and they're, and they're making big bucks, you know. And these guys would call me up and say, hey, Jim, Jim, you know, I hear you make those things, you know. Um, I got a bunch of money. Make me like five of them, you know. Cool. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> So that's that's really what kind of kicked it off, you know, and, and uh, you know, eventually I developed enough work to start um, RD and uh, then I sold RD, you know, RD went for I, I owned it for 10 years and I sold it three years ago and uh, I was a contractor. I was a contractor there for the last almost three years. And as of um, actually as of December, um, I, I'm no longer there. And stepping onto new projects, which we'll probably talk about later on, or something. Sure, yeah, we'll jump into that in a little bit. Uh, just saying hi to a few people in the chat room. Ashley, uh, our our mutual friend, she's in there. Um, Love that girl. Oh, Love yeah. that girl. Yeah, she's doing she's doing awesome things, and mm -hmm. sure do appreciate. Uh, she she's really ultimately she is kind of the reason why you are on the chat tonight. Uh, if uh, with me learning about who Ashley was and becoming friends with her, then I became friends with Anthony and then became mm -hmm. friends with Tufu. And, and then next thing I know, I'm sitting in your house, uh, drinking vodka and talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had, we had fun that night. That was, yeah, that was a good time. Good time. Yeah. yeah. Right on, right on. So, Again, guys, if you have any questions, we have a lot to go through tonight, but make sure you throw them in there. If I can get to them, I will. Um, and, uh, we'll, we'll get, uh, get going after, uh, after, those questions. Um, so I know you, I, I know you get this question a lot, but what was the first AK that you ever bought? Uh, it was Chinese AK type was, 56. Okay. So like what Norinco was that yeah. correct? Yeah. yeah. They were, okay. um, you know, they were dirt cheap back in the days. It was like uh, 81. And, uh, I mean, I think I paid 175 bucks for it. Brand new. Mm. Mm. Ammo and, was th ammo was three cents around. Oh God, it was amazing. <laughs> uh, do, do you still have it? That's the better question. No, no, that gun's long gone. No, oh, right, right. I pretty much destroyed that gun trying to learn how to work on them. You know, and, well, uh, that's the best way to do it, right? <laughs> yeah. But they were cheap, so you know, it, you know, I bought it as a as a, on a whim. You know, they were cheap, and it's like okay, so and nobody would work on them. Those things I wanted to do to them, I didn't know anything about the gun. And, you know, so I finally just started monkeying with them myself. I'm a pretty handy person. I've done a lot of mechanical things in my life. So, um, but the first one I wore, you know, I tore it up, you know, to figure out what made it work. And then I bought another one, you know, on and on, so on and so forth. And then here we are today. Right on, right on. And how many people did you end up having to fight in order for someone to actually start to help you work on these things? Well, you know, in those days, I, I tried to go to two different, um, uh, gunsmith shops and both of them said no we ain't touching that thing they were not really happy to even see the gun uh, both were probably both were vietnam veterans who had an extreme hatred for that gun and made sure that i understood it uh, and we'll just leave it at that mm -hmm. yeah and and, and and obviously that was a a cultural thing uh you coming out of it the was, war yeah. and stuff like that sure, um, sure. and it's still interesting to t today people are still you know, we'll still refer to it as, oh, that commie gun, you know? Well, they, they do, but it's not so much anymore. I mean, it's particularly in the last five years, the popularity of this gun has grown so much, you know? I mean, it's never going to be as popular as an M4. You know, I mean, that's our, that's our, that's an American rifle. That's our stuff. But the, the popularity of this gun has grown tremendously. You know, I mean, when I first started doing this stuff, there was nothing for this gun in this country. You could get receivers and you could get parts kits, but that was about it. Mm -hmm. Nobody made anything cool. There was no rail systems. There was no cool pistol grips. And I mean, slowly that stuff started coming around, but there was nothing like that because there was no market for it. You know, nobody was making it because it really wasn't AK fans. But over the last 15 years, that's changed a lot, you know, particularly the last five. You know? Absolutely. And and one of, uh, one of the things that a lot of people have talked about, especially 
jumping into this year and 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 shot show being what it was this year um there there really wasn't anything that was like wowing people i would say probably on the american side but what you could see is companies like uh kalashnikov usa mm -hmm. palmetto state armory arsenal yep. it, it's it's turning into correct me if i'm wrong yep. here my opinion it looks like 2020 is the year of the ak you know, you could say that, and I've heard I've heard a lot of people say that, and I do believe it's it, there's probably there's some truth to that. The popularity of this thing is really exploding right now. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I've seen, like some of the newest stuff I've seen, was the AK stuff. You know, and uh, you know, there's you know, like with the M4 and stuff. I mean, it's been with us for a long time. There's tons of companies out there making. How much different can that gun be? You know, the AK still has a lot of room for improvement, and there's still a lot of things you can do with it that are new and exciting to people that they haven't seen before. You know, and it's it, it's funny because the guns have actually reversed and in, in, in even in value these days, because, you know, back in, you know, it wasn't that long ago, 10 years ago, a good AR was three to four thousand mm dollars. -hmm. You know, now you can get a good AR for a thousand bucks and, you know, and an AK is you know hitting three thousand dollars in some places now. You know? Yeah. And it's interesting, too, that uh, there's still, I would say, uh, a, a bit of the gun community that still thinks that an AK should be three to four hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, that's that's just ridiculous. I mean, look at the cost of a price kit. They're like three hundred and twenty-five dollars, and that's no barrel, no receiver, no assembly, no finish, no taxes, no overhead. I can go on and on and on. You know? mm -hmm. Oh but yeah. To think that you can buy a gun. I mean, you cannot buy a quality AK for under for under seven eight hundred dollars. You just can't. And even that's stretching it. If you do, you're getting a deal. You know the you know that it's just. When I say quality, though, I mean like an AK that you can abuse and, and really use hard. You know, right. there's guns that you can buy less for that that are going to work for you fine, but they're for the casual user that's not going to, you know, that might only shoot, you know, a couple of hundred rounds a year. That got to last them a lifetime. Yeah. You know, but but guys like, you know, guys like I work with, you know, I, I'm sure you shoot a lot too. I mean, you know, I go to the range. I dump 500 rounds when I go to the range, you know, and I go to the range a lot. Yeah. So it, it's, you know... It's just a difference in, in, in how much you use the stuff. So, but anything that's anything that's going to withstand that kind of use, you need to spend seven hundred dollars or more on it to get it. You just can't get it made for under that. And I'm not saying that. I'm just I'm saying that as a manufacturer who knows this industry, who knows what the parts cost, and who knows what it takes to build one. You know, I'm not trying to blow up smoke in anybody's butt. You know, and, and you know, and the better you want the gun, and the more it's going to cost. It's just, it's just the nature of the beast. You know, yeah, parts are expensive, fitting. You know. Oh, absolutely. And I think that companies like PSA is starting to find that out when it comes to you know building their own AKs. Yeah, you have all the com block countries that already have that infrastructure already set in place. So they're cranking out stuff, and and yeah, you know, a Romanian will, uh, you know, an RH10 or a Wasser would come in about six hundred dollars. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, which has gone up over the last few years. Uh, yep. But now you have, you know, Palmetto State Army, they're they're throwing stuff out there and it's seven, eight hundred dollars, um, depending on configuration. Well, I'm, I'm currently testing their E-model gun. They gave me one of their guns to test, which I was they were very generous of them because, I'm, you know, and I, I have a lot of interest in that because they're pursuing they're pursuing a fully made, a, you know, a fully U.S. made AK. And they've they've listened to the public and they're using forged parts now. So that was my whole purpose for wanting to get a hold of that gun was to see if these things really are what they say they are and if they will, will take the kind of abuse that I would expect them to from what they're claiming them to be. And it's going to get it. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm not running it hard right now. I've just been shooting it more for accuracy than anything. And I've got a, I'm running a four power ACOG on it right now. And I'm getting pretty decent groups out of that FM barrel. I mean, as good as, as good or better than any com block barrel I've ever got out of the barrel. So that's really all I'm testing right now is the accuracy of the gun and how well it works. And then here shortly, I'm going to, I'm going to convert it to a machine gun and just start doing mag dumps through it and beating the hell out of it to see. And it, I'll kill it. Mm -hmm. You know, I can kill any gun. You, you put enough rounds through it like that, you're going to kill it. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's just how many can you get? How much, how much does it take to do it? And that's, that's what I want to find out. I mean, the gun they're putting out, if that gun has got what everything they say in it, at the price point they're selling, I think they retail for around a thousand bucks. Yep. But people are buying them. I see people buying them for like 870, 860, somewhere in that area. You know, it, that's a pretty, that's a pretty big, uh, that's a pretty big deal if they can produce a gun that good at that price point. Yes. You know? Uh, I had a question here in the chat room uh, from Avery. He's saying that uh, he's kind of a question, kind of a statement at the same time. And I kind of want to get your perspective on when you first got that, uh, that PSA e-model 
and you mm -hmm. opened up that box and you you looked at it for the very first time what was your thoughts as far as how was it decent i mean did did, did you think that the fit and finish was good or has it yeah what, what yeah. is your overall thoughts rivets look good i mean that's the first thing i look at is rivets mm -hmm. you know and uh they, the the rivets the riveting was perfect nice round heads everything nice and flat tight to the receiver like it should be you know um looks like everything was dimpled like it should be as well you know it's hard to tell without cutting a rivet out i'm not going to do that but you know the thing was clean you know the gun looked clean it looked like it was put together you know to with a little with some pride there you know now it's an assembly line gun so i mean i could sit there and nitpick it because i build custom handmade guns from beginning to end but i'm not going to do that because that's not what that gun is it's mm -hmm. apples and oranges type of thing sure. but seriously when i pulled it out of the box and look at it it's like man this is not this is not a bad looking gun the action the action felt pretty smooth i mean i could have made it smoother but that's again yeah, that takes time and labor to do that you know um, when i took it to the range and shot it it was zero I mean, I, I shot it at 25 yards, and it was dead on at 25 yards. I yep. didn't even have to move this. I didn't even have to move the sights on it. I just threw my, you know, I checked these irons on. Hey, they're on. So I threw my ACOG on it and adjusted that and went from there. Yep. And uh, Doctor Cat Milk, he's jumping in the chat room too. He's uh, he actually makes a good point. Uh, didn't PSA say their main intent is common use? Not saying quality isn't on the table for them, but common use is their main point. And absolutely, what they have picked up on. And this is something that they said on AR15.com's videos from SHOT Show is that they want their their weapons, the the their AR15s, their uh, AK47s, and their now their new Glock that they're going to put out their Glock clone. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, I didn't know about that one. <laughs> oh, you didn't? Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a Gen 3 version, and wow. uh, they're going to put it out on the market for $299. Uh, Holy shit. Yeah. Wow. So, and they want what they're trying to do is, you know, obviously make a little bit of money, but make sure that it is so affordable that it becomes common use so that they can influence the way that things are uh, steered legally, uh, legislatively, I guess is mm -hmm. the best way to say it. So that was uh, yeah, really making it, making it more accessible to more people. I mean, well, the, the vast amount of that, the biggest amount of AKs that are sold in this country are not by people like me or, or Meridian or, or Mesa, Mesa Kinetics, you know, all these other custom builders, we, we're a very small percentage of the market. The biggest percentage of the AK market is people like Century, IO, who's now gone, fortunately, um, PSA as well. You know, those are the big companies that can produce large amounts of gun. And at this point, I think PSA is ahead of the game with their gun, um, just from what I've seen comparing to the Century guns. But, you know, no offense, Century, but, you know, you guys aren't doing forged parts, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, but again, they're selling. They're selling to a price point. They're selling to a particular demographic on the market, and they they'll, they sell more guns than I ever will. You know? mm. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's just the reality of it. Sure. You know? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, but they're again, like you said earlier, it's you're you're comparing apples and oranges at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. You know, so, uh, Show and Tuck, he's got a great question. Uh, with seventy fours planned for PSA and KUSA, is the five four five going to be a safer bet for a go to? Considering parts kits are next to impossible to find for five four five. Um, yeah, so that's exactly the situation right there. Parts are very hard to find. If you can find a kit, it's going to be a thousand bucks or more. And uh, uh, but yeah, I, I welcome that. I'm anxiously awaiting to see the 545 guns that come out of those people because it's, uh, it's my favorite caliber. I believe it's a very viable home defense gun. I think it's probably one of the best home defense calibers you can use. I mean, sure, certain 545 is good too, but I, I like an AK and I like the 545 caliber a lot. We have plenty of ammo here. Uh, if somebody was, I mean, people will say, well, you don't have a lot of choice of ammo. Well, you got a lot of FMJ for plinking. And Hornaday makes a pretty darn good defense round out of that stuff. Costs you a little bit more money, but you can save money for plink and shooting wool for the zoo animals, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so there's plenty of ammo in the country. There's plenty of mags in the country. We just don't have parts for it right now. And that's the hard part. Um, and if, if, if these guys can come up with guns that are, that are you know, that are durable, we'll take that kind of stuff. I'm all for it, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm an American. Right. So one of the things that <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if you guys know, but I'm an American. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so one of the things that has been very difficult for me to kind of jump into um, the 545 arena is, you know, I, I always thought the 545 ammunition was going to be difficult to find. Um ah. It's not okay because it, well, so let me let me clarify that if you were trying to go buy it at Walmart or something like that, sure, it might not be that easy, but on the internet, it's everywhere and it's cheap. Yeah, 
So when uh, companies started producing 5.56 AKs, that seemed mm -hmm. like it would be a I little was a bit big, more. I'm a big proponent of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is what would you say would be one of the major differences as far as a design perspective between the 545 and the 556 AKs? Is there is there really much difference? The biggest difference is you need more maintenance on the 556 AK. I almost never clean my 545 guns and they run reliably as reliable as you could expect them to be because it has a tapered case that extracts very easily. The 556 five, round is, is a straight wall case and it's brass. So when it fires, it expands and you have a lot of tight metal to metal contact. Mm -hmm. So it's probably three times harder to extract that round or that spent case than it is to extract a steel tapered case, which doesn't wedge at all. I mean, it's a, it is a wedge. There's no, there's nothing holding that case in there. If you turn the gun up, it would fall out. You know, if you did that with an AR, it won't mm. because that brass is wedged in there. And you have an extractor that's about half the size of an AK extractor. So it's, 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 uh, the 545 in an AK is much more reliable. Um, but the 556 can be too, as long as you keep the gun clean and keep it, you know, you, you got to treat it the same way you would your M4. I mean, most people won't run their M4 more than a thousand rounds without cleaning it. I don't think I, I don't, you know, I actually have a couple and I do shoot them. <laughs> but um, I usually have to clean them within about a thousand rounds because they're probably too dirty at that point to be reliable. Yep. Um, and it's the same thing with my 556 AK. I've got an Arsenal um, 106 CR that I, re I reworked and did a bunch of stuff to suppressor tuned it. And uh, um, I clean that probably about every, I took it to a Thunder Ranch class and I actually cleaned it at the end of the day, every day. And I was probably shooting three to 400 rounds a day in that class. And it was starting to feel sluggish. I was running a can on it. So there was a lot of pressure going back on it and smoke and shit. So, um, yeah, it needed, it needed maintenance, but it was a great gun. They work fine. Yeah. yeah. Good. That's good to hear. Um, I do know that, uh, uh, I've got, uh, Zestava. They are sending me one of their M85556. So I should have that here in the next maybe week or two. So I'm excited to see what that's like. Uh, and then I think that would be a good jumping off point to make a decision on whether or not I want to continue to pursue that or if I want to uh, move into the uh, 545. Mm -hmm. um, I do have one more question. I want to get to the uh, chat room before um, uh, we we move on. Uh, let's see. GGL of GGG uh, is saying, what is uh, what was his opinion of the Norinco AK back in the late 70s and early 80s? Basically, when you got your first AK and thinking back to the rifles that you've dealt with now, opposed to that first one, uh, how, how does the Norinco compare? Well, they're different. You know, the, the Chinese, you know, kind of went on their own. Uh, much like the Yugoslavians, they're not as different as a Yugo is, you know. Yugo is a very non-typical AK, believe, believe it or not. But uh, the Chinese was as well. There's there's differences in how they how they built the guns and some of the specs on it and stuff. Um, but they're not bad guns. There's people that will, will bitch about, oh, the bluing is terrible, little rust. Well, yeah, all blue guns rust if you don't take care of them, you know. Um, there was a lot of hate for them. But the, the reality is those guns that came in in the 70s and the 80s, most of them are still around working well. So that ought to tell you something right there, you know. Yep. Now, when you when you look at, a, you know, an Eastern Bloc gun, you know, the spec is different. And I, I wouldn't say, you know, I mean, it's the original spec. It's what it's supposed to be. And I prefer that spec over Chinese, mainly because it's so interchangeable with most other stuff. Whereas a lot of the Chinese stuff is not interchangeable, just like a lot of the Serbian, you go, the Stava stuff, whatever, is not interchangeable with a lot of Eastern Bloc stuff because they're kind of... Um, non-typical AKs, if you know what I mean, mm -hmm. but not necessarily bad. I, I'm a very fond guy. I, I, I own a, I still own a Type 56 S2 and I have a, um, a Chinese RPK as well. And th those guns are amazing guns. They shoot really well. Um, I won't sell them. They'll die with me. They'll go to my kids. You know, that's, 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 that's awesome to hear. Uh, yeah. uh and, and that's kind of how I've, I guess I already kind of knew that when it came to the Norinkos, but obviously to hear it from the godfather himself <laughs> kind of reinforces that as well, well. there's people that'll disagree with me but the reality sure. is they've been around since that time and they're still here so how bad are they you know yeah exactly exactly <laughs> so and um they haven't been imported since 90 92 i think it was yeah, it was 92 when clinton cut off the import of all chinese stuff mm -hmm. 
So 91 or 92. So they haven't had any new Chinese guns come in since then. So any Chinese gun you see still actively working and shooting well today, it's at least that old. And I, and I do know, uh, I do know of one, uh, that, uh, is uh, owned by someone in the chat room that is, uh, still new in the box. Nice. Has never been, <laughs> never been fired. So that is, uh, that's and, you can, awesome. and now you can't shoot it either or else you just, you'll, you'll take about 30% off the value of it right there. As soon as you fire one mag through it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, um, <laughs> so, and, and, and I'm almost, I, I almost guarantee it will stay that way. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you should, it, it comes to a point where a gun becomes a museum piece, you know, it yeah. really, it, it's really true. It, it, it can get like that, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a collectible type thing there, but you know, there's some guns you just need to say, okay, you've served your duty. You hang on that wall and impress people. Yep. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And, and it, it's, I mean, I won't go into it very much, but uh, yeah, anyway. Um, so um, I kind of alluded to it a little bit earlier in, uh, in the, in the chat uh, that I was able to hang out with you during shot show at your place. Uh, we mm -hmm. spent some time out in your, your garage kind of tinkering. You're showing me some stuff. And uh, mm -hmm. one of the things that I was most interested in is understanding, you know, how to actually press a rivet and, and, and all of that. So you were great. You showed me exactly how to do it. Obviously it wasn't uh, exact <laughs> because we didn't have a trunnion, but the yeah. biggest question is for a lot of people in the audience that may not know how easy or difficult is it really to build an AK? It's not like building an AR. Let's put it that way. Sure. You know, um, it's, you know, most people with a few hand tools can sit at a table and put an AR together. That's not the case with an AK. You need specialty tools and you don't, you need to know how to use them. And then, of course, you need to have you need to understand the way these things are work. I, I've often said it's a lot more like blacksmithing than it is gunsmithing. You know, it's uh, I mean, you're you know, well, you saw, you know, you're using a you're using a twelve or a twenty ton press, and you know, you're mashing stuff and bending stuff and beating stuff with hammers, and you know, it's kind of how they go together. And yeah, it's not difficult to do, but you need to know how to do it right, or else you'll end up with a gun. And and I, I like to say this too because the AK is such a great design. It be built horribly wrong and still work you know it just won't work as well or as long you know so there's a lot of misconceptions about how the ak should be built because you can really put it together in a lot of really haphazard ways and it'll fire around you know mm -hmm. uh, but to build it properly it needs to be built with rivets and put together in the right with the right specs and you know things that go along that make that gun work as the design it was intended to be right and, and one of the things that it, I have a hard time wrapping my head around is I'm so used to building a, uh, ARs. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've built, you know, a dozen or more, uh, in the last probably four years. And <clears throat> one of the things that, that I'm just, I've just gotten so used to is torquing down, uh, the barrel nut and, and retaining that barrel. Whereas the, the AK is completely different. It's, it's basically pinned into place. Is that correct? Yeah. It's, it's pressed into the trunnion itself. And uh, then it's it's cross pinned across the top of the trunnion as well to hold it in, and it's a it's it's a rather primitive way of doing it compared to the way the AR is done, and uh, it, and, and because of that, it's like with your AR. If you got a bad bolt, you just buy a new bolt and throw it in there, and you don't have to worry about it. You can't do that with an AK. Um, you know, you got to check head space and you got to make sure because not all not they're not all the same, and because of the way the gun head spaces. One bolt has a little bit more wear on it than the other. One may, may be a number one bolt or a number four bolt. Who knows? Uh, but generally, I've found that if you have an AK and you want to find a bolt that matches, you probably need about five bolts to choose from to find one that's going to headspace with the gun. Right on. Uh, we, we do have a uh, super chat jumping in here to kind of divert uh, our conversation just a little bit. Keith AV1 is uh, dropping in $10 and says, uh, what does Mr. Fuller think about the Galil Ace? Yeah, it's a nice gun. It, uh, you know, it, it's a, uh, I haven't had a lot of experience with them. I've looked at them at a couple of the shows I've been, I shot them a little bit and I think it's a really nice gun. It, it's just a different version of the AK. I mean, the Israelis always had their version of the AK and this is just another one. Um, not a bad gun at all, but you know, I, I should spend more time with it, but you know, my time is pretty limited these days and I, you know, some things I just don't need to pursue, you know, but sure. that's not, that's not a slight on the gun. I think it's a decent gun. I shot it. I enjoyed it. Yeah. 
Uh, what would you say would be the major differences between the standard com block AK and the Galil? Is there really anything? I, you know, I really, I really haven't had a chance to take it apart and look at it. So Fair I enough. wouldn't want to say on that. Honestly, sure. yep. just from handling the gun itself, though, it feels like a quality gun. It shoots well. It balances well. Um, really, nothing wrong with it. You know, but it's just, it's just a little bit different. You can tell from looking at it from the outside. You know, um, it's just not something I have time to deal with right now. So, right. I right. Mean, I'm starting a new company, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, you know, I yeah. already got one. I already got the, I already got the PSA gun to TNE. I don't want to TNE another one. right now. So, um, so one of the other important things that we talked about in your garage about rivets mm -hmm. is, um, you showed me the rivet that you pressed and from one angle, it looked like it it was good to go but then you rotate it 90 degrees and you can tell that that rivet was canted and you said that that was incredibly important yeah. why why is that important well because the, the it's not structurally sound if it's not seated properly you know it should be sitting perfectly flat perpendicular to the receiver like it should be it should be nice and tight to the receiver and it should be a nice round head you know a lot of um you know and then when you look inside the gun you should see a nice round little pancake that's um that looks right you know, it, it, it's symmetrical and everything. And also, too, a lot of times you'll see you press a rivet, like your rivets up like this, right? Mm -hmm. And here's your head up here. The head on this side, you look at it, and all of a sudden the heads are off like this. That's called a folded rivet. Mm. This, when this, when you press the one side over, and it's usually on the long rivet that goes all the way through the trunnion. If, you're, if your receiver is off at a little bit of an angle when you press it, that thing will form the head off center of the rivet. And it'll look fine from the outside until you turn it and you look at it and you go, whoa, fuck, one head's here and one's here. Uh, drill that one now because it's fucked. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think I think the correct term that you talked about was shear strength. Shear strength, correct. Yeah. Yep. And that okay. generally applies to the, the, the swell neck rivets where you have concaves into the trunnions. Hmm. And you have to remember we talked about that, how you have to dimple the trunnion down into the, the sheet metal of the receiver down into the trunnion. And the, the rivet itself has a countersink on the top. You know, a, a swell neck, as they call it, and when you press it in, everything just becomes one nice, and that that really applies a lot of sure strength to that. It's a yes. lot of metal to metal contact. Yeah, and that, that was something that I didn't understand, and that's something I'm grateful for you to to, to educate me. I, when I think of a rivet, I think of something just kind of holding it into place, mm -hmm. not not something that retains it from moving back and forth. Right, uh, and, and that that uh, uh, was See, a screw holds it in place. Hmm. But a screw won't keep it from moving back and forth. Right. The countersink and the swell neck is gives it the sheer strength. Absolutely. You know, that's why if you look at aircraft rivets, you know, I mean, I, in my in my early twenties, I went to airframe school. I never did it for a living, but I spent a year playing with a year and a, six months in school, six months on the job training at Lockheed. So I got a pretty good education in, in aircraft riveting back in those days, and uh, it was uh, and it's, it's based on the same principle. You know, it, it, it is. I mean, look, getting next time you get an airplane, look at how many rivets are on the wing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? and, and if one of those rivets ain't set right, the one next to it might pop. Yeah. And the one next to that might pop. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's the same thing with an AK. It's just yeah. less rivets. <laughs> yeah. So I, I did grow up in a uh, aviation family uh, mm -hmm. coming from Wichita. That's just the main industry in Wichita is aviation. Sure. And, uh, and that's one of the things... <laughs> And I, I, I love the man to death. And I just chuckle every time when we start talking about uh, planes because my dad refuses to like fly uh, because he spent 35 years building aircraft and he knows exactly how to build. <laughs> He's like, I'm not getting on one of those things. <laughs> well, remember, IO claimed aircraft, aircraft technology or aerospace oh. technology. That's what it was, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I hate to keep picking on them, but they're dead and gone. You know. <laughs> well, yeah, they are because uh, they their yeah, their booth was empty at Shot Show. So that's yeah, you <laughs> saw all the joke pictures from that one, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, Todd Schmidt jumping in there. Uh, how does Mr. Filler, Mr. Fuller, excuse me, uh, feel about the uh, VZ58? Uh, good check rifle right there. Yeah, it's a good gun. I used to own one. Um, they work. Um, it's not an AK. It kind of looks like one, but it's really not. It's nothing like an AK inside. Um, but it's not a bad gun. They work. And to our brothers up north in Canada, that's all they can have. They can't have a real AK, so enjoy them. You know? Yeah. Uh, they, they look close enough? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, they still shoot the same round. They work. I mean, the one I had, I never had any problems with it at all. It's just, you know, it's a little heavier because um, it's a milled receiver. 
you know so and i just like lighter guns so you know it's an it's not it, but it's not an ak um i want to transition to some of my uh patreon questions i do have uh a, a couple of really good ones from uh someone watching tonight and and i want to say uh thank you to uh patty she's been a huge supporter of the channel so thank you so much but uh uh as far as uh upgrading AKs. Uh, is there is there specific triggers that people should be looking into as far as um, you know dropping one in for their AK? Is is the ALGs kind of the gold standard, or is it still kind of the? I'm I'm you know, quite I'm quite fond of the AKT myself. I I use them and I you know the G2 has been the standard in these. Now that's kind of a an up into question right now because um, Tapco, who who sold the G2, has been recently bought by Freedom Group, and they're being basically shelved. Mm -hmm. So nobody knows what the future is of the G2 right now, which has been kind of the standard. Most most any you know any gun any AK you buy in this country, most of them are going to have a G2 in it. I think Century has their own triggers that they use, uh, but most anybody else is using a G2. And then the upgrade to that, you know, because the G2 is very similar to an, the feel of an original trigger, you know, and that's what I run on all my, all my, you know, period correct guns, but on my, on my hot rod guns that I'd like to fight with and stuff or train with is, um, you know, I run AKTs in those. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Actually saying RIP G2. <laughs> <laughs> no, the G2 has just been a standard forever. I mean, it works. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a good trigger. But like I said, it's a little controversial right now because nobody knows if there's going to be available anymore. I mean, they got molds out there for the casting. Somebody's going to pick them up and start making them again, just like the U.S. Palm grip. You know? Yep, yep. That's a very good point. Um, and then another great question as far as, uh, you know, adding optics to an AK, is there is there a specific optic that still kind of brings the essence of a com block AK, but is still extremely functional, but kind of like a fixed power? Do you do you have any recommendations on that? I mean, as far as com block? scope well it doesn't necessarily have to be com block but still you know a, a an, an optic that you could put on an ak and it still look like it should be in on it on an ak if that makes sense well you know american optics don't really look look much at all like com block optics they really don't you mm -hmm. know if you want that look you need a com block optic in my experience the com block optics are not as durable as what we can get here mm -hmm. um, i use two different scopes on my ak's i use an acog on a side rail that I move, I run it on my DMR, and I'm right now I'm running that particular scope. I took it off my DMR and I put it on that AK E, e that I'm testing, and uh, and then I generally run a red dot on a forward mount any other time. Mm -hmm. you know, in in most AKs, you know that the, I mean I can my five four five guns I can hit targets to seven hundred yards with a two MOA red dot, so I don't really need much else than that. And even with my old ass eyes, you know. Right on. <laughs> and and mine, mine's starting to go that way too. Well, I've uh, had cataract surgery in both eyes. So trust oh, wow. me, they're fucked up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Blitz jumping in there with the $2 uh, super chat. Thank you so much for that blitz. Uh, uh, thoughts on the heavy AK variants like the PSL PKM. Well, PKM is not really a, it isn't, it is an AK derivative, but it's a general purpose machine gun. That's not really a, I love the PKM. Don't get me wrong. It's my, I believe it's probably the best belt fed machine gun ever, but it's really, and it's based on the AK design. It's basically an AK turned upside down on steroids and it's belt fed, you know? Um, the PSL is a giant AK that shoots a 54 R. Um, mm -hmm. I owned one for years. They're kind of cool. Um, not particularly heavy. They're just, I mean, of course mine, I cut my barrel down, I think like 18 inches on mine. So that lightened up the front of it quite a bit and it actually made it shoot better too. Um, but they're pretty cool guns. I, you know, they're, I just, I don't know how available they are still. I think they reimported them again recently. And I know the mags were ungodly expensive for them for a while. So I really haven't, I haven't owned one for probably five or six years. So I'm not really up on where they're at these days. Mm -hmm. Right on. Um, sorry, a answering some questions here in the chat room. So, um, let's, uh, let's start diving into the, uh, well, I got one last question for myself, uh, because, you know, I'm selfish that way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's your show. You can do it. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> as far as, um, as like the com block AKs go, you know, when, it, when you start really getting into the minutia of the, the AKs from different companies, Romania, Poland, Bulgaria, East Germany, uh, Hungarian, wherever the case may be, what are some of the real minute differences or, 
are there any any differences? Well, they're all, shall we say, AK spec. Which okay. Means they can all vary a little bit. You know, most of them are based on the same thing, but you know, I think what it comes down to with most Eastern Bloc factories that have been doing it, that were, you know, like particularly the ones that particularly Kalashnikov helped set them up and stuff like the Romanians, um, even the Egyptians, as ugly as those guns were, they were still basically built to Russian spec, you know. Um, but most of that stuff is, is pretty similar. You know, here in America, it's a little bit different because we don't have access to a lot of that stuff. What we've had access to here has been mainly been parts kits. You know, I mean, I've seen complete guns from a lot of other countries and, uh, I would. I really like the Russian guns a lot, but I'll tell you honestly, I think some of the cleanest AKs are probably East German. I mean, as far as the quality of the workmanship and mm. and and just how the guns look in general. I mean, they have a little bit different look to them. They use like those plastic pebble stocks and some other things like that. But if you look at the metal work on those things, there's there's no tooling marks on those things. They're super mm. clean. Uh, they really are. They're probably some of the nicest parts. You know, after that, a lot of the Polish parts were really nice, and we were really fortunate. When Poland went NATO, they had to cut up all their 7.62s, and we got most of their 7.62 parts kits here. And for like three years, we were building off of all those those really nice Polish parts that were uh, had very little to no, no wear on them. And that was kind of spoiled you because uh, once those were gone, it's like, oh, we have still have Romanian. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, I, I don't let me be there. Romanian works just great. But as far as the, as far as the quality level, the tool marks on those things, the spec on them. There's a lot of there's a lot of issues with Romanian stuff, uh, but they can still be a good gun. They're just not going to be as clean as a Polish gun or as a Russian gun or as an East German gun because they're just made to a different you know level of craftsmanship, I guess. And not bad, just just different. Exactly, uh, and, and that's that's something that I I have started to see and understand from just my. Um, remedial you know uh, new to the ak platform between things that i've seen from the romanian stuff from like a wasser and rh10 and then obviously looking at uh you know the like the wbp foxes and uh the uh zestavas uh mm -hmm. so yeah well i mean uh, even you know even looking at an arsenal gun you know you'll see the difference there I mean, honestly, I would dare say, and some some people are probably going to get pissed off about this, but I would say, honestly, right now, um, you could take one of those new PSA guns, and they look nicer out of the box than a Romanian gun does in a Wasser. You know, I mean, they're they're made nicer. They're the quality, the craftsmanship on them is a lot nicer on those guns. And you, there's probably people out there going to throw a lot of hate at me for saying that, but you know what? I know what the fuck I'm talking about. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> and I completely agree with you. When I, when I I got my um. PSA K47 GF3 first, uh, mm -hmm. and then, you know, took it to the range for the first time, you know, okay, great. And then I went ahead and bought an RH10. And when I got it, when it was on the way, a buddy of mine who runs a podcast, Semi Arm Life, Mike, he said, uh, he said, be prepared to uh, look at an AK that looked like Edward Scissorhands put it together. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, it showed up, and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Kalishnikov yeah. Society jumping in there. Um, uh, good to see you. Thanks for swinging in. Um, one question came in from Jacob uh, in the chat room, and he said, uh, what do you think is the best AK and what is the best starter AK? Uh, I I'm, I'm going to be um, pretty – this is my opinion, and this is from someone who is relatively new – to the platform uh, for the best starter AK at the moment. And my mind can be changed moving forward, but for starting some less than a thousand dollars, I'm personally really liking this, the Zestava Z paps right now. It is a Yugo. So there is some compatibility issues and stuff like that. We're trying to upgrade it, but you can find that type of stuff. I really do like how, uh, how tuned it is. It's real flat shooting. Um, so far, that's what my experience has been. As far as the best AK out there, my opinion, I mean, we've got we've got Mr. Fuller here. We've got to say anything that he builds, right? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it's it's what do you you know what do you want the gun for? You know, I mean, I can build some pretty I can build some pretty cool fighting rifles, and they're gonna cost mm -hmm. you, they're gonna cost money too because it takes a lot of money to build that stuff. You know, but you can build period correct guns that don't cost as much. You know, um, I, I get people send me like a nice Russian kit 
and a children's receiver that's period correct for it, you know, and I put it together for them and everybody's really happy about it. So mm -hmm. it's really all in what you're building. You know, there's a lot of, I personally think that, you know, if you go to a custom builder and there's a lot of them out there now, you know, 10 years ago, that wasn't the case, me and Krebs and a few others, you know, maybe, but now there's actually a lot of pretty good builders out there that are turning out pretty good work. You know, and I don't want to start naming people because when I do that, people say, well, why did you say me? You yeah. know, and it's like, yeah. you know, there's some good builders out there. Guys, guys do your homework, read the reviews, Go to the AK groups and read and find out who's doing good stuff. It's not hard to figure out, you know. I mean, I'm going to be back in the market here pretty soon, too. By this summer, there's going to be my guns available as well, so I want to sell them, too. And they're going to be good. Not going to be cheap, but they're going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you can find you can find custom guns in, in a lot of different levels now. You know, you can get a, mm -hmm. you can get a gun put together for a 1000 bucks. you know. And and you can get you could you could spend 3000 if you want to do that. You know, and then if, and as far as like the beginner stuff, you know, I'm not afraid to say that PSA is not a bad thing. PSA and Century, if you're if this is an entry level gun and you're only going to shoot it a little bit, if you're going to shoot three, four, five hundred rounds a year, those guns are going to work. You know, now I'll know more about the PSA when I get a chance to see how well it does, but I have high hopes for it, and I think it's a better quality gun than the um, than the than the Century guns. Of course, you're going to pay a little bit more money for it too. I think I'm not really sure what the prices are on that, but I'm just trying to look at what's available there and tell people it's like, okay, you can get this for this price and understand it's a starter gun. You're probably going to want to do better down the road if you want to shoot more. So and that's usually how I try to present it to people. Right, exactly, and, and I think that's something that uh, is a conversation that everyone has to ask. Is the first question is uh, what do you want the rifle for? Exactly. Period. Right. Yep. So, so you, when, when we were at your house hanging out in, in, you know, just kind of <laughs> sifting through your safe of all the different, <laughs> oh my gosh, things. Yeah, um, there's, a few, there's a few in there. <laughs> there, there's, there is one that you had on uh grand thumbs um, show that is your go-to. It's your home defense rifle. Um, and, URD, yeah. yeah mm -hmm, and that's the one that you suppress. That's the one that you've tuned specifically for your home defense. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of interesting uh, tidbits about that, uh, about that rifle. So if you guys haven't seen that video with Grand Thumb, <laughs> if you haven't watched Grand Thumb, you guys, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> come on guys, I'm sure you've watched that video, but um, some really fun video. He's a nice guy. Oh, he is. He is. Yeah. Uh, and let me <laughs> ripping through that seven and six, you know, <laughs> 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 we went through a lot of it. Yeah, we burned, we burned, we burned a, we burned a thousand, thousand eighty rounds that day. We burned a whole can that day. Yeah. 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 Um, which, which is really cool. I, 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 I'm sorry I had to jet, but, uh, uh, I was worried about missing my flight. And <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And you were there just for a few minutes of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I, um, got to the airport and ended up realizing i had a, another hour to spare at the range oh, with you guys yeah so but that, that's okay it, it, but just being there and just seeing how you guys interact and everything and that was really super cool um well, oh, actually um, we're gonna be doing some more stuff together here pretty soon i'm actually um that well this gun here this 105 that i had in the video this is the one that that um that he uh he's gonna we're building him one just like it you know, so we're actually going to, I'm going to do a private build class with him where he builds that gun himself. You know? mm. So I'm getting the parts together right now and I think he's going to videotape it. So there'll be some more stuff out down the road with, 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 with Grantham. Mm. Um, 22 Cheapster, he wanted some clarification because I think that uh, a few other people may have the same question, but he's saying uh, that you were talking about a period correct gun versus a custom gun. Uh, what, what is really the difference between the two? Well, like people will buy, like say, you know, you bought um, a cut up Russian kit and you want it to look like it did when it came out of the factory. You know, you can buy, you know, Childers, a couple other people make um, receivers that are, um, that look identical to the original stuff. So a guy will send you, send you one of those parts kits and one of those receivers and new barrels, whatever you want to put in it. And then you put it together to build it exactly, look exactly like that factory gun that came out of the factory in 68, 69, whatever the year was on the gun. So that's a, what we call a period correct build. And, and I do a lot of those because, you know, frankly, they're, they're fun. And I really enjoyed the history of that. And I love seeing the old parts like that, especially a lot of the really clean parts that we get in. I've done some really nice East German guns that um, were just amazing that I took photographed heavily and kept pictures for myself just because it was like, fuck, 
I'll never even have one of these. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, one of the things that you did want to that I that I wanted to talk to you real quick about uh, your, your your URD is that you said that uh, that that barrel's been shot out. And that oh no, you, that was the uh, that barrel's not that barrel's good, and that was the oh, barrel in my one hundred five that shot one hundred five. Okay, the yeah. one hundred five. I'm sorry, I got him confused, but uh, yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's it's the that one's the uh, the one with the fun switch on it, yep. and, and that's why it's shot out. <laughs> <laughs> now the interesting thing is that you said that you can switch out a barrel several times in an AK. Oh, mm -hmm. well, what's that all about? Well, whenever you you know, if you look at a standard AK. Like here, you know, you for those who are not familiar with, you have a, a a barrel pin right here. The barrel presses into the trunnion here, and then this pin goes in across to hold it in. So basically, you press that pin out. You know, obviously, you got to strip the gun apart. You press that pin out, and you push the barrel out, and then you can press a new barrel back in, headspace it, redrill the hole, and repin it. So, and that can be done, you know, with a, you know, from a from a new gun. You know, based on the spec that I use, you can rebarrel a gun five times, you know, which means I consider it, you know, it's going to be at least a hundred thousand round gun that way. You know, and we, you start at a certain size and you can only go so big, you know, you have to jump the size up. Every time you rebarrel, you got to make a bigger barrel pin. It's just the nature of the beast to make it right. So you have to go up in size and eventually you're going to, by the time you get to the fifth barrel pin, you're starting to get to the point where I wouldn't take any more meat off that trunnion because mm. you could not, it might not be good. But of course, at that point, Put a new trunnion in the front and a new bolt. And just keep going with the old receiver. You can't. Right I've done it. Yeah. Right on. Right on. Uh, I do have a question from my uh, Discord. And <laughs> uh, these guys, I tell you, um, <laughs> they they, they want to know if you would ever consider building a a guitar style AK forty seven or a AK forty seven style guitar. I've thought about that, and it's like, I think I would have to go with the guitar that kind of looks like an AK, you know, because it'd be pretty hard to make a guitar shoot and not fall apart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right on, right on. So I uh, wanted to fulfill my obligation to the Discord well, guys. You know, there was actually, there's a video, if you look it up, I think it's called Diresta, D-I-R-E-S-T-A. This guy took a, a regular electric, electric guitar and just started cutting it up and adding pieces to it. And it looks like an AK when it's done. Mm. I mean, he did a really good job of it. So if I tried to do it, it would probably be something like that because that's kind of practical there. You know, can't it, shoot it, but, you know. Is that what it's looking like? Uh, no. no. No, it wasn't okay. that. But, but hey, that's that's a good attempt too. I, I don't think <laughs> it's going to shoot, but I don't know. I can't see much more than that picture there. You know? Right on, right on. Um Okay, so let's kind of let's let's change gears here real quick, guys, and we're going to go into uh, a bit of a discussion about the future of the AK. Uh, Jim and I kind of talked about this on off air, and uh, we've had some questions in the chat room about this as well. Uh, but what do, do you do? You think that the AK twelve is what is going to influence the uh, the AK moving forward, or is it just kind of a modernization of that rifle platform well it's it's an upgrade of the furniture more than anything um you know different different folding stock on it um different furniture to where you can have a plain straight level rail with a, a hinge dust cover so those are the improvements on it but underneath it, it's still just really a 74 um it's a, it's a cool looking gun no doubt um, a little bit more modular a little bit more modernized than the old 74 uh, the thing is, is like, as far as you're never going to see a lot of parts kits for those things in the country, people are buying them onesies and twosies at a time because you can order them on the internet for some of these people in Russia and you can get them shipped to you, but it's going to be a lot of money by the time you get one. And it's not, it, you know, for a manufacturer to start trying to make AK 12s, it's not going to happen unless they're just, you know, putting together other people's parts kits because the price point would just be incredibly too high with the cost of getting a parts kit over here. You know, generally we get parts kits for, you see parts kits retailing for around 300 bucks, but to be able to get them that cheap, they're importing, you know, 250,000 of them at a time or something, you know, mm -hmm. and you're never going to be able to do that with Russian stuff unless something really seriously political changes. And I don't see that. Yeah. Right on, right on. Uh, mandatory carry uh, jumping in there with the $5 super chat. Thank you so much, mandatory. Appreciate you swinging in for just a few minutes. Um, and please check it, uh, check us on the, uh, on the rerun it says running short. And at work, but I'll swing back later. Hashtag keep fighting. Thanks, bud. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, so what would you say would be 
the next leap forward in the Kalishnikov rifle? Uh, is it is it a new caliber? Is it uh, is it uh, something new like the uh, the rails that you have on your URD, or is it uh, um, what else? What do you think? I think the biggest leap forward that could come along with this gun is a good, solid U.S. made, hundred percent U.S. made gun, which is why I'm testing the. Um, you know, the PSA gun. I think that could be the biggest boom to the AK right now. And I'll tell you what, uh, most of the parts that we're building 7.62 guns on right now are rem Romanian, which has always been our standby. And, uh, you know, now, you know, back in the day, you know, when we first started building these things, those kits were $99 and they were brand new cut up guns that had never been fired. Um, that's not the case anymore. A lot of the stuff you get is pretty worn. And uh, some of it I wouldn't even use. Uh, there's certain levels of those kits that I wouldn't build a customer's gun on. Um, because they're gunsmith specials or whatever you want to call it. You might be a few parts and they're good, but I don't want to sell a guy a decent, what he's, what he's counting on his life on or something like that. Mm -hmm. My biggest concern is if anything ever happens to those Romanian parts and politics as they are, can happen anytime. We don't have anything to build decent AKs with here. That's why we need a U.S. made AK that is quality parts that we could continue to be for this gun to be here. Because I'm telling you right now, if for some reason today the Romanian stuff start stop getting imported, there's no parts to build anything. Hmm. You know, I mean, you could get, I mean, the WVP stuff is kind of a lower spec. So you really couldn't call it a good factory com block style spec gun. You know, I mean, you could order that stuff. And I'm, again, I'm not running that stuff down. It's just built to a certain price point and it's not built to the same spec as, you know, the standard original com block stuff was. Hmm. So right now, the Romanian stuff is about the only thing that we get like that in, in amounts big enough to keep the industry going. Right. Uh, it, it, you brought a, brought up a good point, and, and, and I'm, I'm sorry if I missed it, but it, it, as far as the specs goes on, on different com block countries, in your opinion, which one would you think is kind of the higher tier? Uh, of the com block AKs? Yes. Well, like I said, I think the East German stuff is, but you're never going to see a lot of that stuff over here. Right. I mean, it, it trickles in a little bit here and there, but there's never been any large amounts of that stuff imported, not like they did with the Polish or with the Romanian or the Yugoslavian stuff. And we got tons of that stuff imported into it. Mm -hmm. So so you would say probably the the would Romanians be the best mid-level and easiest to find as far as kits go? That's about all there is really available right now that I would right. use. I mean, there's probably a few other oddball things out there, but, you know, to be able to have the numbers you need, you know, if you need to buy 100 or 200 kits, you're probably not going to find that it's going to be Romanian if you want to get that many kits at one time. You know? Right on. Right on. Uh, uh, du Bois Barbecue jumping in there, and we're just going to have to jump right into this. Uh, he's he's asking uh, with his $5 Super Chat. Again, thank you so much for that. Will Jim be <laughs> teaching the AKM Builder class this weekend, or is he not doing them anymore? Um, I think if he's referring to the rifle dynamics, we've already hit that point. But uh, Jim, what's the future for for you, I guess, uh, with whatever you can talk about? Well, it, no, I won't be teaching that class this weekend. I don't. I, I, my last class there was to, was in December. And uh, no, uh, you know, I wish them the best of luck. It was there. There's great people there. They do good stuff there. But um, I just needed to do other things. And Karen and I got an incredibly good offer to do something that I probably would not have been able to do had I not got this offer. So uh, anyhow, I, again, um, we're, we're making progress and getting there. Um, by the summer, everybody's going to be know what's going on. And if I can let anything out sooner, I will. But this is, this is probably the biggest thing we've ever done, Karen and I, and we have to do it right. And we can't just start talking about everything that we're doing because I've come to find out is no matter how much you want to trust people in this industry, you say the wrong thing and people will fuck you in a minute. Yep. You know, if yep. you give any kind of hint at what you might be trying to do, somebody out there will fuck you. Mm -hmm. And you, you guys out there in the industry, you all know it's true. When we started this industry back in the early days, it wasn't like that. The handful of us that were doing it, we all got along well. We actually coordinated what we were building so we weren't stepping on each other's feet. If you can believe that, if, if Krebs was doing a 762 guns, I'd do 545 guns. But it's not like that anymore. This has become a big industry now, and there's a lot of people doing it. And there's a lot of people that don't mind stepping on you or taking credit for what you've done or try to convince the world they're the greatest thing there is and nobody else knows what they're doing. I know I'm not the best there is, but I, I can admit that. And I've done it a lot longer than most of the people doing it out there today. You know, So, you know, that's just my philosophy on that one, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so naturally, obviously, there's there are good things 
fast approaching for you. Uh, and, and of course, Karen as well. Um, Karen's always going to be there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of the, uh, one of the most awesome women that I've met, uh, here, here recently. So, uh, uh, tell her hi for me is, uh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, she actually fell asleep, so she didn't come out. She usually comes in and just does a quick wave, but yeah. she, she was kind of tired tonight. We sure. went bike riding and stuff. So yeah. awesome. Uh, show and tuck. Thank you so much for the two ninety nine. fist bump back to you, uh, on the super <laughs> chat. Appreciate that. Um, so, uh, you did allude to it, uh, several times over in the chat, you know, starting the summer, there will be some, uh, some uh, Jim Fuller rifles coming coming the way. Yep. Uh, so yep. that's there. There will be guns coming out. Um, there, I will be teaching classes, maybe sooner than that. I don't know, uh, but um, we'll be doing classes again. Probably more private classes than anything else. I'm not going to do really big classes anymore. I don't want to, you know, cram a bunch of people in there and try to give them all the information I think they should have in two days and not be able to do it because there's too many of them. Uh, I prefer to keep it small and make sure that everybody gets what they came for and walks away understanding and being very comfortable that they can go home and build their own gun. Yep. And I think it's extremely important, especially for someone who is wanting to really soak up all of that information, uh, to, to understand how that rifle works. Uh, mm -hmm. and yes, Ryan, he, he is, he is pouring the vodka. So <laughs> Not I'm just vodka. Oh, no. Oh, man. I had to eat that in the camera there. Yeah. Beluga. Oh, this is the goodness. best shit. Oh my goodness! I tried to find some for when I came. I know. Over. I know uh, you're. Uh, I know you can because you're not feeling too good tonight. But I'm good, man. <laughs> yep, yeah, absolutely. Cheers. Rock, Rock and roll, roll brother. brother. Rob and Patty jumping in there with nine ninety nine. Thank you so much for the super chat on that. Great education. I sure do appreciate it. So one of the things that uh, Jim and I talked about off camera uh, is you know once things get up and running and everything, uh, I am doing whatever I possibly can. If I have to sell half my weapons to do so, I'm coming out to do a build class. And, and, and that's the, that's the one of the cool things I think is so awesome with Jim is the fact that he's really concerned about the idea of uh, making sure that people are extracting as much information uh, from, uh, from him when they're doing a build class. So doing them small classes is pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. Well, We've always tried to treat it like that. We were the first ones to ever do it. And uh, God, there's been thousands of people through that class. And uh, actually, a lot, of the, a lot of the good builders out there that are doing good stuff were students of mine. And I'm really proud of that. You know, mm -hmm. They've gone on their own and made their own way. And uh, that was kind of the whole idea was we need to build an industry. You know, We need to make this gun popular. We need to get more people to build guns for people. And it kind of works. Yep. <laughs> so. Yeah. It, which is which is pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> so so maybe who knows? Maybe maybe Jim's going to teach me so well that I can take his place when he retires. <laughs> hey man, I'm gonna I'm I can't do this stuff forever. I'm I'm looking at maybe another four or five years right now, and then I'm probably gonna call it quits. Ooh, and, uh, okay, you know, but who knows? You know, <laughs> I thought I was gonna quit a year ago, and I didn't. Yeah, so. yeah. Um. One one last question comes from our friend Tyler from Tender Tactical. He does uh, Tyler, <laughs> good dude, man, He's a good dude. <laughs> he does want to know when can we expect Jim to play Ghost from uh, 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 Faith from Ghost uh, on on. I have to look it up and see what it is. I'm familiar with the band, yeah, uh, but I'm not familiar with that particular song. That that song is uh, one of their newest songs that they've off of their newest album. So, yeah. And then uh, I will look it up and I will do my best. All right. You know, I, I mean, there's 45 years of industrial workforce on these fucking hands and they don't work like they used to when I was in my 20s. But yeah, it's still kind of fun and I can still kind of do it. Yeah, I can tell you, <laughs> once you hear that song and you listen to that opening riff, uh, I mean, I'm thinking about it and I'm just like I, my my young fingers can't even I don't even think it could do it. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. All right, Jim, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, closing this down. We've been going for a little over an hour here. Uh, you know, it's all thank, good. thank you so much uh, for, yeah, for glad to do it, man. Uh, I, I want to kind of turn it over to you as I like to do with all my guests and give you the last little bit to say whatever you want to say and, uh, you know, promote whatever you want to promote from here. Well, um, I think uh, probably the most important thing I'd like to say is I just want to thank everybody that supported that supported me over the years and uh, stuck with me and uh, believed in what I did because um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's important. You know, there's a passion inside of me about this stuff that some people know about, some people don't. And 
it's it's important to me that this stuff goes on and does well. Um, you know, I'm a big Second Amendment supporter. I worry about our I worry about our future of our gun rights, which is one of the reasons I pushed the most politically incorrect fucking gun ever made. You know, because I don't really care what they think. We have a right to have that. Mm. And uh, teaching people how to build them themselves is another part of that. So that nobody can ever take that right away from you. Now, I'm not saying you need to go out and be illegal, but everybody has a right to have a gun. And uh, I've done everything I can to maintain those rights and try to teach people how to maintain their own firearms ownership if for some reason they can't anymore. And uh, anyhow, thanks for all those people that believed in that and have followed that path because we're getting there. We're getting there. And uh, uh, watch for what I'm watch for what I got coming up. Uh, follow my social media. We'll have all new social media accounts going, a new website, and all that stuff that goes with it. Um, but you know, the Fuller AK um, Instagram page and Jim Fuller Facebook page will still be around. I still got to get out there and rant and do that shit like I normally do. None of that stuff's going to go away. That's just me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but again, uh, th thank you all. I, I really appreciate all the support we've had over the particularly since we started this process. Some of the industry people that have stepped up to help me, I had no idea. You know, it's like, you know, it was kind of overwhelming a couple of times. You know. <laughs> Absolutely. I can completely understand that. Uh, a lot of kudos coming in from uh, the chat room saying that how informative this is and 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 to thank you for taking the time tonight to, to, to join us. Um, this this is a treat for me. Uh, like I've said several times before with other guests, uh, I, I can't believe that the Jim Fuller is on my show. <laughs> it's just amazing. Uh, amazing. Um, Dude, it's, it's just guys talking about guns. I do is. this every day anyhow. It's fun. Yeah. You know, and we is. can entertain other people doing it. That's cool too. You know? <laughs> well, um, I, I do uh, want to extend an invitation to you to come back on in the future. Sure. Sure. Once I get a little bit more educated, um, hopefully a mutual friend of ours is able to work out a special trip in October, maybe. We talked about it at your house. I don't know if you mm -hmm. remember that, mm -hmm. but uh, yep, 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 we're yep. going to keep that a secret. Uh, if, yep. if that happens, that would be cool, wouldn't it? it oh, it would be cool. <laughs> oh, <my gosh. laughs> uh, for those of you in the chat room, just think what happens in October and what we've been talking about tonight. So uh, that would be a cool trip. Hopefully something like that would get pulled together. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I think we can make it happen. I, 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 I would love, I would absolutely love that. Um, with that being said, I, I do want to extend an invitation to you to come back on when I'm a little bit more educated and we can kind of dive into a little bit more of uh, some of the finer points, uh, talking about a little bit more of some of the specifics behind what you find so interesting with the uh, uh, AK. So with that being said, ladies, mm -hmm. gentlemen. Jim, we're going to go ahead and say goodnight to everybody. Uh, thank you again so much for everybody in the chat room. You guys have been awesome. And uh, again, I will have a whole bunch of information in the pinned comment. Uh, so you guys can circle back, find some more information about Jim. I will have that there uh, as we conclude this. So uh, have a great night. Uh, thank you again so much, everybody. And as always, keep calm and carry. We'll see you later. Thank you, Mark. You're a good dude, man. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs>